So 31 year old patient, patient prisoner with pain abdomen. Classical abdominal fistula. Abdominal distension. And uh, also, uh, uh, patient was, uh, has a tachycardia of 107 and BP was 115 by 76. Uh, on per abdominal examination, uh, mm. on per abdominal examination, patient had uh, mm. uh, had an uh, diffuse abdominal tenderness with uh, with a lump fell at the epigastrium stream of around uh, 10 into 10 centimeter, and patient had, uh, other than that patient there is no guardian or rigidity, and both sons are present, and ultrasound findings. Uh, uh, it showed a 600 cc of uh, collection. What did you find in the abdomen, sir? Sir, in the abdomen, uh, I could find a lump of, uh, in the epigastric region. Oh, of this is the lump. Hepatomegaly is there. There is massive. Massive. Hepatomegaly. There is a massive. We used to have it with that. There is a massive. Liver is palpable. We already done the translation. That's the bulge which you are referring to. And uh, is there any free fluid? Yes. Uh, so uh, they they have not mentioned about the free fluid. So. So the ultrasound shows a 600 cc in segment 7 and uh, 200 cc in the left lobe and uh, in 4A, 4B and a rent of 2.5 cm. So they, they were abscess, you know, earlier they would do the jarring test. Now we just percut and they will stand in it, which is a feature of liver abscess. Even if it is ruptured, it is loculated because it is confined. Yes. Because the rest of the abdomen is soft. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. And uh, where all it can rupture? So it can uh, rupture into the pericardial cavity, it can rupture into the uh, uh, dural cavity as well. Dural, pericardial and peritoneal cavity. Yes, so where is this ruptured? It is ruptured into the peritoneum. Is the dura absolutely fine? Can, can I see the x-ray? Almost invariably you will find some fusion. Yes sir. This is reactionary, but here you don't see much of it. But you can see there is a tenting of the diaphragm being pushed up. And the patient is not looking, otherwise also very healthy. Is he a non-alcoholic? Chronic alcoholic. Sir. You should have told me the whole story. What is the significance of knowing alcoholic or not? Alcoholics tend to get more of pyogenic abscess and they tend to have a worse outcome. They often present with jaundice. What, which one is this? Pyogenic or amoebic? Pyogenic, sir, most likely. Multiple? Like you to be pyogenic, and why does that produce more of these features? Because of ascending cholangitis and associated septicema so that may happen. Ascending cholangitis leading to multiple abscesses is the, the way it happens mostly. Amoebic liver abscess is mostly solitary, confined to the posterior superior Surface. right side of the lobe. What are we doing now? So we are planning for interventional radiology or uh, for pigtail insertion uh, because but the patient's blood parameters are completely deranged. His bilirubin is raised 3.1 and uh, when will you decide to operate? So if uh, the patient uh, first I'll uh, assess the general condition of the patient. If uh, there is hypotension and tachycardia and along with that, per abdomen if the patient develops features of peritonism, then I would like to go for periton uh, expert leprotomy. Anything more? So same, Apache, as per the Apache score, sir, no, That's right, score, score, but actually when the patient has features of peritonitis, yeah, peritonitis yes, you should operate. Yes. And you can always do a closed drainage in most cases. Yes, but then if it is ruptured or there is an impending rupture, some people believe that you should go in faster. But you can use interventional radiology for this purpose. What is deranged when you say? So is KFT is also deranged and LFT. Urea is a uh, hundred and... Uh, Why is KFT deranged, Ayush? Why should KFT get deranged? Because of syndrome. One is hepatorenal syndrome. Very good. What else? Don't worry about it. You, you can answer when they can't. They don't know. You should know. Maybe you you have an answer. They don't have it. So hepatorenal shutdown and septicemic. Septicemia can also produce features of renal derangement. So that can also be a factor. What else? Free renal, sir, because of dehydration. Free renal can also happen. Free renal and? 
septicemia, pre-renal, hepatorenal. So you can have all three types, right? So you need to take care of that. How much is the urine output now? Urine yeah. output is around 600. <laughs> 600 ml. Mm. But urea is 149, sir, and creatinine is 4. And uh, bilirubin is also raised 3.1 with deranged enzymes, in, uh, elevated enzymes, and ALP is 100, 1,131. What antibiotic you putting on, uh, Ayur? Sir, uh, double dose uh, metronidazole, sir. And we have liver acid and sir, uh, monocep for uh, double dose. Monocep for what? Sir, uh, uh, E. coli tablets for monocep. Yeah. What are you saying in between? E. coli and what, what else? Sir, E. coli tablets for monocep. Because you are suspected to be a ascending cholangitis also, no? so you would like to have that. 30 years old female, uh, patient uh, operated for uh, emergency open appendicectomy on uh, 15th of this month and uh, patient was discharged uh, uh, the next day. Now patient presents the emergency with a uh, shortness of breath and tachycardia. Patient has been admitted uh, for my side for the same side. Right side chest. Right, right side chest, pure effusion is here on... Uh, Sir, X-ray also shows right side pure effusion. We had sent a medicine call also for that, but uh, they have only sent back the patient to manage the post-op surgical complications. So why, why do you think it has happened? I'm going to close that door. Sister, close that door, please. Don't keep it open. So in the post-operative period, we suspect uh, atelectasis to be uh, uh, one of the complications. Um, okay, one. Sir, uh, in the setting of acute the, uh, the because the history was the, they had they had done open appendectomy with drain session, perhaps it was perforated and the collection had swept and collected into the uh, subdiaphragmatic space. That might lead to sir, that shoulder pain saying. and. No, that she is saying. I thought you were saying something else. There is a subdiaphragmatic collection with the basal atelectasis. That's one possibility. Yes, sir. What else? Therefore, it's very important to make sure that it was not a negative appendicectomy. You should be very clear that it was actually appendicitis and not some other pathology like tuberculosis or something else where this could be coexisting. That's number two. Number three, you should also make sure that, uh, uh, you know, during surgery or following that, there was no element of portal pyemia or something. Portal pyemia is also a possibility following appendicitis. So we need to be careful about it. Portal pyemia is an ascending infection that occurs along the portal vein. And it can produce multiple liver abscesses, right? So that also is a factor. So you got an ultrasound done? We got an uh, ultrasound done for this patient. And ultrasound revealed that uh, the, there is no dilated bowel loops. And also... Uh, Abdomen is okay. Anything uh, else you found? Anything significant? Sir, uh, x-ray shows right side pleural effusion. Collection the right now, how can that, how can you proceed from there, Raman? So there are x-rays showing pleural effusion. So if we can uh, proceed with the ultrasound guided to right now. No, you got a pleural effusion, all right. Hmm? Ultrasound is suggestive. What is diagnostic for pleural effusion? This you taught here, MBBS time. Hmm. No? Uh, diagnostic is a tap, sir. Tap, very good. So once you tap it, can you make a diagnosis based on that? Yes, sir, we can send for... Uh, no, you don't have to send. You look at it. What do you find? If it is a reactionary one which you were talking, it will be transited. If it is a pyogenic one and it's causing, it's purulent, then it will be. Yeah. That's what you have to look for. Understood that case. Even if you are referring it to S4, you should at least make a diagnosis. Okay. Uh, so if you have effusion on the right side, if you have post appendicectomy patient, the scenario is clear. So what all comes to your mind? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for MRCS they ask you. Classical scenario, this is asked. Sir, we must rule out facilitated tuberculosis. Uh, it would be... Uh, 1, 2. And uh, sir... Uh, so first find out whether appendicectomy was correctly done. Yes. And for what was it done, right? Second, what next we do? You try to... Sir, look no. for... Sir, the, uh, as the ultrasound showed, the liver is fine, sir, and there is... No, 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 what? I'm possibly... Re revisiting the scenario, you're answering the same monotonous way, what's the point? Sir, pleural effusion, we would like to do a diagnostic tap. No, no, that's one. Effusion, you're thinking it could be... Reactionary, reactionary or it could, or be, it could be, be... Tubercular. Tubercular. No, no, not tubercular. Okay. It could be itself the cause. We don't know whether it's tubercular or not. Right? So, reactionary or exudate? Yes, sir. Two, you are not getting the scenario. Appendicectomy done one week ago, 
patient is some bit <coughs> right sided shoulder pain effusion so subdiaphragmatic collection sub subphrenic abscess as they call it pus somewhere pus nowhere pus under the neck patient has features of swinging temperature and all those features are there so that comes to your mind ne next yes. third there could be a separate pathology in the pleura which is what you are talking about maybe that time patient had the issue what are the types of effusion if you get pneumonic post pneumonic and pneumonitis also no? they occur along with pneumonitis which can happen with basal pneumonitis in patients with limited diaphragm movement right to right uh, the crust is not moving adequately there will be collection that gets infected and patient has pneumonitis so these things need to be excluded what did you find on ultrasound uh, so there was a collection of uh, around 7 uh, in the 7 cm in the right leg fossa that is one and right side of and then right side of fusion right that's true so actually uh, when she presented to er she she was just complaining of pain while inspection so it was kind of pleuritic uh, chest pain sir uh, so one medicine opinion was taken sir they have uh, done the examination but they refer because they were suspecting it is post op complication only so patient need to be managed under surgical side but to me sir it look uh, like some different pathology in the pleura itself because the typical history which she is giving uh, pain only while inspiration and uh, pain is getting referred to the shoulder i was at that time i was also suspecting some diaphragmatic uh, subphrenic abscess also but the ultrasound scan it, it did not show any collection and uh, only effusion is there so to uh, the pleuritic pleurisy so it is a pathology that's the same thing you're saying so basically it's either a pathology in the abdomen or in the pleura yes sir both causing each other yes yes sir so some young old female patient presented to the emergency room with non passage of flatus and stool for the past 4 days and also pain of the men uh, patient uh, at presentation uh, his vitals were uh, uh, 85 uh bis per minute with a uh, pulse rate with bp of 100 uh, 140 by 36 uh, and uh, on per abdomen examination uh, abdomen was uh, abdomen was distended uh, with soft and there was no uh, there was um, mild tenderness and then there was no guardian or rigidity bowel sounds are present at present so not just here on chronic constipation soft non tender uh, yes, abdomen sir. in an elderly lady she is getting blood transfusion yes, for sir. what hemoglobin was 4.3 so that is is, uh, is this patient, related no sir patient had a history of uh, uh, um, hemorrhoids past past 2 years three, back 2 uh, years back so did you establish it sir so right right now when we did the dre there was uh, rectum was collapsed only fecal, fecal staining was there yeah. but uh, there was no uh, blood on the finger stalk and uh, sir uh, there was no uh, um, hemorrhoids are seen and uh, patients are uh, see uh, in an elderly patient presenting with severe anemia for a non specific cause what all comes to your mind uh, <coughs> what's the name sir akshay akshay chawla akshay kiya uh, Next, you don't know, say you don't know. Sir. I don't you can say one time. Sir, in elderly patient with severe anemia, we can suspect uh, malignancy to be the cause of it. Right, right side malignancy. Yes. No bleeding on the left side. That's one. Two. Then. As the carcinoma stomach, sir, well, yeah. she is giving any history of any dyspepsia, recent onset dyspepsia. One is stomach, the other is cecum. Third, any non-specific no. site. Does she have any bowel yeah. complaint? Yeah. uh she presented with uh, constipation chronic constipation the moment i say elderly think of malignancy as a hint sometimes the only presentation of carcinoma of cecum is anemia asthenia anorexia which is non specific but exclude a hemorrhoid if the patient is giving a history now dre does not exclude hemorrhoid you need a proctoscopy and you should do a proctoscopy for that purpose she is not in obstruction and there is nothing surgical that needs to be taken care of just now what is the patient is here you might as well manage her for this she is chronically ill if she has got anemia is blood transfusion the answer no. what are the risks of transfusing blood in patients that are severely anemic so um, volume over volume overload and cardiac failure so what is it that you should do This is a chronic anemia. It is not managed by transfusions. Remember that. So we need to do studies to rule out the type of anemia first. What's the type of anemia? Peripheral anemia. Good. By serum iron studies and B12 studies. Because if it is the iron deficiency anemia, blood transfusion won't help. It will keep on happening. We need to rectify the cause and uh, treat it. Sir. One, two. 
if you want to transfuse just to save time and go for something definitive reduce the volume so how do you make it possible that the volume goes and patient still gets hemoglobin packed cells so you give packed cells yes sir so transfusion should not be given beyond a point elderly lady with such a severe anemia blood transfusion and overload can cause cardiac cardiac arrest so be careful about that that's what you need to know there is nothing in the abdomen yes, this sir. is not a problem of obstruction yes, but the patient could have a malignancy which we can't make out based on clinical examination all the time yes sir so because the cecal malignancy yes, takes a long time to manifest as a lump diverticulosis the other possibilities are uh, the more than diverticulum what else uh, richi there's something that is common on the right side of the colon not on the left side and your dysplasia so we need to exclude it by doing colonoscopy upper gi endoscopy and capsule endoscopy which is what you do in these patients but patient has first established a type of anemia if she's got a deficiency anyway you are unnecessarily wasting time so we need a good blood peripheral blood smear thin and thick we need the blood picture completely and based on that we take a decision on how to try so don't transfuse blood this is not something which is a good idea in a patient with severe anemia especially elderly because their cardiac uh, efforts are already compensated so anything else to be done nothing else to be done then what do you do this charge so we do the cup sir the cup sir we must so what will you do i have told a few so starting with proctoscopy so rule out upper gi lower gi bleeding and then the obscure gi what is obscure gi bleeding <coughs> ोपी or you can do virtual colonoscopy what is that so it it's a three dimensional uh, 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 which we non invasive method of assessing the gut read about that or this patient first of all established a type of anemia it's very important sometimes we are dealing with a different kind of anemia and you are trying to find a yes, cause somewhere if it come out in the paper is if it's come out it come out to be anemia chronic it's a deficiency anemia, anemia then you are wasting time yes sir how did this patient land up in surgery so she presented with the non obstruct non passage of stool and platelets and see the problem with non passage of stool and this thing is almost everybody for, who is not eaten for 2 3 days will have it yes sir so our triaging system needs improvement in that way you getting the third patient any patient with chronic liver disease will have ileus ascites leads to ileus it's a known feature and ileus is not just an obstruction yes so the trouble is if you are if you are an illiterate in in the clinical field you'll keep referring patient here and there that's what is happening this that patient has no business to be in surgery yes because you are doing fine right so don't worry the same thing you all female patient presented to the uh, subsequent emergency with a uh, pain in the uh, right leg fossa for the past two days uh, other the patient had a uh, tachycardia of 180 and uh, bp of 120 by 68 uh, on for abdomen examination uh, uh, there was tenderness a uh, localized tenderness present in the right leg fossa with a uh, Uh, while the rest of the abdomen was uh, soft non tender there was no garden or rigidity bowel sounds were present on uh, on ultrasound findings uh, it showed acute appendicitis and uh, you need ultrasound for this you don't appendicitis is a clinical diagnosis but since you mentioned ultrasound so amen what are the features on ultrasound that make a diagnosis of appendicitis i want to remove from your head this first year pg syndrome But you won't answer because you have first year PG. No, you must answer even if you finally doesn't know. SR also doesn't know. Doesn't matter. You answer. Uh, so if you really don't know, say you don't know. Don't waste time. Sir, non-compressible tubular blind ending structure of more than six mm is diagnostic with very inflammatory feature. One. Edematous wall. Say edematous wall. edematous wall sir okay so uh, uh, blind ending non compressible aperistaltic structure of more than 6 mm and uh, wall to wall diameter with the surrounding uh, ecogenic uh, uh, what he has spoken if you are repeating what's the point 
Yes. So surrounding collection, uh, right? Well, that they have mentioned beyond that. A peristaltic means what? What is a peristaltic, sir? It's not, it's not moving, sir. So not... Why should it move? What is the basis of this sign? It's infinite adoration. Everything is related to obstruction at the base. Because... <coughs> and basically, there is a double circle sign. A larger circle is for the cecum, smaller is for the appendix. <coughs> and ultrasound. If you press on the larger one, the smaller one should distend. If there is an obstruction, if there is obstruction, this is suspicious of appendicitis. All appendicitis is obstructive mostly. Catarrhal is very rare. That is why appendicitis is not common in very small children because their base is wide. Is that clear? So, and what are those two constant symptoms and two constant signs that you must get? Uh, symptoms are uh, tachy, uh, symptoms are uh, uh, signs are tachycardia and uh, tenderness. Yeah, tachycardia is a sign. Uh, no? uh, tachycardia and tenderness. And symptoms. Symptoms are sir, pain. anorexia pain. and sir, uh, anorexia and migratory pain, sir. Shifting pain. Signs: tachycardia yeah. and. Tenderness. So there is no appendicitis patient who has good appetite and there is no appendicitis patient who has bradycardia. So these are two constant features. Did you find anything on the abdominal examination? Kaise ho abhi pehle se aaram hai beta? Haan. Haan? Moh udhari rakho, tum to so ke uthe ho. Jiska wala aaram se so ho. Throughout night sir, she was not complaining of any pain and there was no tenderness also. Ghar ka hai tumhara? It's okay. Ghar ka hai tumhara? Haan? Govind Pulling. Govind Pulling. Okay. Karbat Lele. Is it a base lamp? There is nothing. We do this shift test because everything else falls apart. And what is the shift test that we do, Junaid? Sir, we need to rule out uretric colic versus the appendicitis. No, that's not shift test. You disappointed me. Sir, it was done in pregnancy. So it was uh, done in pregnancy. It was done for pregnancy cause and uh, pain in the right leg for some. Pregnancy, you can have uterine pathology or a tube pathology. So this was confused with appendicitis. Appendicitis diagnosis is difficult in pregnancy because there is distended uterus. So if you do, you palpate for tenderness like I did just now. So well, this is a tender point. <coughs> this is it. Then I ask her to tilt. Convert Lily. And look for tenderness again. If it is shifted, that would be uterine. If it is not shifted, it will be appendicular. That is a shift test. Don't mix it up. How will you differentiate in the ureteric calculus? Uh, sir, uh, in, if, if it uh, other way <coughs> shift, sir, the tenderness, if tenderness stays there, sir, it is the uterine, uh, ureteric. Disappointing. So it might be associated with burning maturation. So the first point in history, burning maturation can happen with you appendicitis also. In pelvic appendicitis, which is irritating the ureter, you can have immaturity and burning. Loin to groin pain. Loin to groin pain. Loin to groin pain. To bradycardia, which is colicky. And appendicitis will produce tachycardia. Secondly, tenderness is absent in ureteric colic. Appendicitis is tender, but ureteric colic can simulate it. There is a cough test that they do, which you read in your books. On coughing, if the pain gets worse, is appendicitis, because muscles are used. In ureteric, don't matter. So what is it now? Settling appendicitis. What you got an ultrasound done? Now you got a diagnosis of appendicitis. If you were practicing, you would suggest take the appendix out. This is not what you should do. What is the differential diagnosis of appendicitis in this age group? Specific question. Lymphadenitis, sir. Misentric lymphadenitis. Keep finishing. I didn't stop you. One lymphadenitis. Uh, I've seen uh, yeah. uh, no, that is uh, I'm being... Uh, 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 These two... Uh, uh, Ileocecal tuberculosis. I said this age, we have a specific... Ruptured ectopic, ruptured ectopic. Ruptured ectopic, okay. 
Mitchell Marsh. Sir, with the rupture of the ovarian follicles also, or during the cycle. Mid cycle pain. You can actually simulate, which absolutely looks like appendicitis. They will be pained it with ref, which is referred to umbilicus. Why is the ovarian pain referred to umbilicus? Same dermatome, T10. T10. So both for appendix, for testis, for ovary, it's T10. Yes, sir. So that Michel Merz also will produce rupture, blood will irritate the peritoneum, and will have guarding rigidity and all those features would also appear. Important to understand. Exclude that. Take therefore a good menstrual history, which you should have told me. The other thing you should have told me were those basic important features which differentiate appendicitis from all the other features. To be observed, don't doubt this. Yes, so, 32 year old man patient, presented to subdermal uh, emergency with uh, pain abdomen and abdominal distension, with non passage of flatters and stool for the past four days. Uh, uh, presentation patient had a tachycardia of 130 with a uh, BP of 110 by 78 and uh, on poor abdominal examination patient had uh, uh, abdomen was distended and on uh, the patient there was what uh, do you see here so, uh, the umbilicus is transversely straight which means flanks have fluid yes, this is fluid should be okay yes, sir. what so what else did you find uh, Upper abdominal examination, there was a, a decreased abdominal tenderness with guardian present and uh, uh, bowel sounds were absent. Uh, his chest x ray erect showed uh, uh, air, air, uh, gas under diaphragm. You can see it also. Yes, sir. This is resonant, no? liver dullness is masked. So, absence of liver. The clinical, yes, not absent. Mm. Masking. Mm. And this is a surgical abdomen, clasp. So what's your clinical impression record, sir? So most likely this patient uh, is a case of perforation peritonitis. Perforation of liver? Uh, bowel. Can it be stomach also? So don't use that term. Perforation of hollow viscous. Hollow viscous. So the correct term is? Okay? Yes, sir. Perforation of hollow viscous. Okay. In view of the features of peritonism, masking of liver dullness, and the history you have given. Which type of operation it is? Is he a known alcoholic? So he is, uh, he, he gets history of alcoholism, alcoholic intake. So he is a chronic smoker. Yes, correct, sir. So right. what is it that you have not told me which you have, which, which would have an impact on the management? Uh, patient, history of uh, TB as well. And Normal operation being managed in our unit. Apache. Apache. We need the Apache to scoring. How much is it? So we do not have the blood investigations. He came in the morning only, so we could not calculate. How would but that matter, because sir? So, uh, with the Apache scoring, we can uh, uh, base. We can for OT management. Uh, either the uh, we can do an allo transverse or we can. Hmm. Uh, we can decide uh, whether to uh, gently have some intervention the patient, uh, place of abdominal pain, sir. Or sir, if there is a perforation, we can decide about uh, repair of perforation, sir. Or sir, uh, making an allostomy, sir. Steady eyes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the past score <coughs> can be divided into three ranges, less than 10, 10 to 20, and more than 20. When the score is less than 10, then the patient is vitally relatively stable, so we can go for a session and ask. We can go for closure, primary closure, and we can go for an estomosis. We don't have to exteriorize. Between 11 and 20, we will exteriorize. more than 20. exteriorize in more than 20, you, you won't take up for surgery. You'll resuscitate like we're doing for that case. We'll put in drains in the flank, do some lavage, and when the score improves to group 2, we manage it as group 2. What antibiotics you have put him on? Brother, what is he getting? 